All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webcast on real life operations management and use cases solved with maximal health, safety, and environmental applications. I'm Valerie Crawford, and I'll be your moderator today. We've got just a few announcements before we begin. Um, first of all, I wanted to wish everyone a very happy new year and best wishes for a healthy 2021. And we've had really some great support and participation in the Maximo Wednesday webinar series. So thank you for that. And we're happy to continue these into the near future. So I know our next session is gonna be on February 17th and we'll cover Maximo Mobile. And we're currently trying to nail down a date in March for a Maximo roadmap session as well. Um, we've gotten some really good feedback from um, you guys as the audience. So continue to, to send that our way. Um, a lot of you guys have requested kind of what we're doing today, today with more of the show and tell type sessions, which dive deeper into some specific use cases and product functionality. So we will be continuing um, with those as well. As far as today's session, we will be recording it and we'll send out the link within the next few days. It typically takes about 24 hours um, for the recording to generate. And right now everyone should be in listen only mode. If you do wish to ask a question, um, please post it in the Q&A panel, which should be on the very bottom right of your screen. And please be sure to send your question to all panelists. If we don't happen to get to your question today during the session, we will be sure to follow up with you directly afterwards. Um, also, if we experience any technical difficulties today, we will not reconnect, but we'll go ahead and record this offline and then we'll send out a link to the recording. And so we will email the link to all who have registered and we'll also post the recording in the IoT community. And I'll be posting that link in the chat here in just a moment. So let's go ahead and move on to the webcast. Um, discussing today's topic, we have Matt Lister, who is one of our IBM client technical professionals. We also have Russell B, who is our lead product architect responsible for Maximo HSE. And we have Lacey Lurgis, <clears throat> excuse me, another one of our skilled client technical professionals. So Matt, I know you have a lot of material to cover, so I'll go ahead and turn this over to you. Great, great, yes, um, thank you. So this is, um, like Valerie said, our first webinar of 2021. Um, we're gonna look at the HSC application, specifically operations. Um, I'll kind of try to move quickly. I won't do any introductions just to save some time to get into Maximo. Um, but we're going to go through kind of the overview of HSE. Um, some of you also know it as oil and gas industry solution. Um, <clears throat> then we're going to take an operations team journey through Maximo. Um, one of the pieces of HSE is the operations application. So we're going to show you how they can <clears throat> incorporate their, their job and roles and activities into Maximo. We'll go into, um, into Maximo environment and look at some of those operation applications. And we'll also touch on some of the new functionality and capabilities um, that came out in the latest release of HSE. And then we'll leave some time for some questions and answers as well. <clears throat> so HSE has been around now for a while. Um, like I said, it's also referred to as an oil and gas industry solution. Um, but the, the cool thing with HSE and, and probably one of the best features I know of in the last few years is that it's combined three different roles and activities into the EAM solution. So a lot of times I came from the power plant industry uh, with General Electric for 20 years and operations and safety were always activities that were done outside of Maximo or your EAM system. So um, what HSE has combined a lot of those activities into Maximo. So now you can do all your operation rounds and logs and procedures and combine that with the, the maintenance of all your assets. Um, the safety, you know, is always part of the core. You could always do a, a basic lockout tag and expanded with all the new functionality around isolations and bypass management. So this gives you one solution um, to, to do all these different roles at a, at a facility or a plant um, so they can all cal cl collaborate on the same work order. So one thing I like to do with HSE, there's a lot of applications, a lot of, um, there's four main modules. So one thing that is key is the work order is the main transaction. 
Um, we all know when you do maintenance at a plant, work order is what um, the technicians use to track all their work. And on that work order, you always have an, an asset or a location. Uh, what HSE has given you with asset tracking is expanded functionality around failure analysis um, and classifications. You get the ISO 14224, if you've got the oil and gas uh, solution, you've got all that data, the codes that go with those ISOs built into the tool. So you can now do FMEA, critical, criticality assessments, risk assessments on your assets. The piece we're gonna look at today um, which is one of my favorites, is the operations. So <clears throat> all the activities that operations used to do outside of Maximo can be done um, within the system now. So we're gonna look at operator shift and logs, how you can now attach operator rounds with the work center inspections. Uh, we'll look a little bit at the procedures and policies and see how that relates to um, a maintenance work order and how they can uh, work together. Um, but, you know, the core system has resource and vendor tracking on your work order. Um, the, the items in green are, are, are kind of new, new capabilities with 7612. But on resources with HSE, you also can now start to track qualifications and training around the people that get assigned to the work. The three main applications or modules for HSE are safety, risk, and uh, defects and investigations. So these three applications are all linked through the work order. And as I scroll, go through the journey, you'll see how you can use the work order as your centerpiece attached to an operator log, and you can access all the safety, all the risk, and then the further investigation after the work's been done. And it all comes back into one transactional um, system with the work order. Then you'll also have your standard reporting and mobile solutions that really can touch any of these applications um, within the system. So this is the, um, just HSE now. You'll see four main application or modules, operation safety, risk, and defects. We're going to concentrate on the areas in green today. Um, and if we do further webinars throughout the year, you know, we could probably do one just on risk, just one on investigation. So I'll try to touch as much as I can in the hour, um, but we will be going through mainly the operations type uh, applications. So what I'm gonna try to do is just take you through a little journey um, of an operations staff at a site. So uh, the bottom, in blue is going to be with the maintenance activities and safety activities. So ma maintenance is going to set up all your assets like they normally do, set up all your schedules of maintenance. This could include um, daily inspection rounds, um, could be set up as a PM work order and inspection. Um, they'll be setting up all their FMEA and failure analysis on their asset. The operations team then comes in with the ability now to track their logbook and all their shift logs in Maximo. As, they, as the operators you know, enter their daily logs, they'll be able to come in from that same screen and be able to see operator round inspections, both scheduled, if it was scheduled off a of PM's uh, work order, or unscheduled inspections. There's some new functionality 7612 now where you can just grab an inspection um, and, and do it as a round in the new work, in the work center inspections. We'll then continue down the process of after they've done that rounds inspection, they, they're probably gonna be the ones, the operators that find the work that needs to be followed up with the maintenance staff. So you might trigger some work orders from your rounds inspections um, if they see a failure, um, something that needs to be followed up by the maintenance department. The maintenance department will then do the planning of the work order. And again, this will incorporate both the operations and the maintenance on things around operator tasks, uh, safety. There's some new applications around lock management where you can now track your locks and your keys um, associated with the lockout tagout. Uh, you can do access permits to individuals, bypass management if you've got any valves that need to be um, bypassed. And then the training, I'll touch a little bit on the tr new training module where you can track training sessions and training uh, certifications on people or on permits. We'll then continue down the cycle. Um, we'll, maintenance would we'll schedule the work. 
there they might assign some operator tasks. So I'll just highlight, you know, how operations can be activities or tasks on the work order. The maintenance will complete the work. Um, and again, if they, if they need to involve operations, there's that link between the completed work and the operator rounds. After the work's completed, a lot of times operations wants to initiate a further investigation. So this is where you can start to do a root cause analysis, an FMEA, on what was the cause of the issue. And sometimes you'll need both maintenance and operations to be involved with this investigation. So we'll look at investigations. If there then is determined that maybe there's a configuration change that's required at the site that's going to affect operations, um, you might need a management of change. So there's a, man a full management of change application in the HSC that can be initiated and, and completed by maintenance. It might involve initial proce uh, new procedures and policies around commissioning and startup after you've maybe installed some new assets. So I'm going to show you how those operating procedures and operating policies can be tracked in Maximo and be linked to that work order as well. And then you also have the ability to track any production loss. Um, if you want to track how much money you were losing or how much uh, product you were losing within the site based on that investigation. And then the last uh, thing I'll show is just a, a dashboard of operation actions. So there's a one spot screen where you can see all the different actions that operations needs to follow up on. Okay, so I know that was a lot. I'm going to try to take you through this journey in Maximo, highlighting each one mainly in the white um, as we go through the tool. I'm going to go into Maximo. So I'm on the new version 7612. Um, <clears throat> I'm logged in as an administrator, so I've got access to all the applications in Maximo core system. This, this demo environment has HTC, I think it also has transportation installed. But you'll notice here on the left, if, if you're familiar with Maximo, these are all modules. And as you highlight over a module, you'll get additional applications that you can access. Anytime you see the word HSE in parentheses, that means it's specific to that HSE add-on. Um, if you've got the oil and gas industry solution, you'll see the word oil there um, for, the, for the application. A lot of new applications and also a lot of um, cloned applications that have additional attributes or additional tabs associated with HSD. For, for this use case, I'm going to go into operations first, where I've got my logbook. Um, this is very exciting because this is something I know when I was working with the site years ago, um, the operators would keep books, these big green hardcover books of all the written logs every day. And it seemed like nobody ever went back to, to look at the logs unless there was, you know, some issue at the plant. So now you've got the ability to, you know, electronically keep this log book and then have all the electronic logs tracked right in Maximo. So I'm, that's the first area I'm going to go to is the operator log. And I know we've got a wide users on this webinar, so hopefully most everyone's been at least seen Maximo. So as I move through, it might be quicker, it might be too quick for some, but I'll try to move as slow as I can. So the shift log is if I hit enter here, I've got a couple logs where I've entered for demo data. And I'm going to click on this first one called the central facility shift log one monthly log. So you can set up these logs as, you know, a week a day, a month, and this is just an organization of the, that shift and then the entries that it's going to make for, for each of the daily logs. So as I scroll farther down here, you'll see you can uh, attach a shift to a person, a supervisor, assign an asset or an area that maybe you're going to do the, the uh, round on. Here I've got a few log entries. Um, they're very easy to enter. Um, for the operators, you can, you know, it's just a, a, a couple entries that they got to make. They don't have to put a location or an asset, but they just say, you know, check the compressor area. If they just want to put simple logs here, um, they can do that and save it. The piece I want to concentrate on is this new operator rounds tab. So 
before the last release, which was November 7612, um, a lot of clients were starting to use inspections, work center inspections as their rounds. Um, so what you would do is you would create a PM schedule um, of a daily rounds that say, go do this inspection of all the assets in this area. Um, there you would have to, before you would have to come over to related Attach the jet, the scheduled work order that had the inspection on it. Um, it was just 1 extra step that you would have to do. Um, that was kind of cumbersome. So what um, Russell and the team have done is they've got this new tab called operator around. So you now got the ability to still attach an inspection to the rounds, but you do not require a work order. Um, if you didn't want that whole scheduled system going. So you have two two ways to do it from this tab. You can come in and you can go to manage inspection forms, which would have all your inspection templates. You could attach it right here, and this would be somewhat similar to an unscheduled uh, rounds inspection. So if you didn't want it to be generated daily, you'd come in here, gen, uh, create the inspection form, and then create a result form. That would create this this record down here under the results that would give you the inspection to go complete. The other way you could do it is you could still um, have the PM schedule work order sitting there and you could have, you could just come in and select that inspection from the list. So in this case, I might've had a PM that kicked this out daily and now I can just select it here and it links this inspection around to the uh, log. And then if you wanted to then go do complete the law, uh, the rounds, you would then have that inspection form linked from your operator log into the work centers where they could then go do it on an iPad um, or whatnot. Now, the, the, one, the next step that in the, if you remember in the journey is we're gonna complete the rounds by the operators and they're gonna wanna trigger some work that needs to be completed by the main. So in this case, they might go do the inspection rounds on their iPad. They might fail a couple questions. They might say, you know, um, lubrication was completed. Maybe it's a no. I want an action to take place. So from the work center inspections, you can create work orders, trigger work orders from the entire inspection, or you could do it at the question level. That's going to create a follow up work order. And I've got one here on my related that gets linked to this inspection round. So I'm going to go over to the related records. <clears throat> and I've got a, I've, I've attached a few work orders um, ahead of time, but I've got this daily inspection round because I did have one that was scheduled. But I'm going to um, go ahead and look at 3681, which is the work order that I, I triggered from my inspection. So. What the cool thing with the operations is it's now linked all my maintenance activities to my operations. So any related work that needs to be done in maintenance or operations is all linked together. And, you know, within Maximo, you can on any application transaction, you can go to this go to and go to that application. Um, screen, so I'm going to go over to the work order and just highlight a couple things that operations might do. So now I'm on the work order that, you know, the maintenance was following up on, the compressor was running hot and vibrating. So the first thing that operations might have to do is they might have some activities assigned to them. So under plans, the maintenance staff might, you know, assign a task to operations to do some work. Um, they can still use the normal labor to assign that to the operations. But also safety is, a, is a, a big activity that operations gets involved with. So they might have to prep the, the assets for lockout tag out for, for the um, work that's being done for the maintenance. So this is the normal um, kind of out of the box core safety plan. What HSC provides you is additional applications around safety. So I'm going to click on the related records because I've already attached um, a few related applications around HSE. One thing you can do um, from the work order or from the rounds is you can always over on actions create additional records. So if I needed a bypass valve um, management, I could I could do that with a bypass. If I needed a permit to work, 
I can attach that uh, risk assessment. All most a lot of these are HSE applications, a management of change. And as you attach them either on the rounds log or on the work order, they get attached as related records. So here in this example, I've got a bypass um, management valve that I've, I've attached as a record. And there's a whole nother application around bypass management. I've also attached further down under my permits, permit to work is I've got a, an, an access permit and an isolation. I'm gonna highlight the access permit because this is something that's new in 7612. Um, you've always had permit to work certifications um, with the HSC, but now you've got one that's called access permit. If you need a, um, just a, one permit for an individual to be assigned right away, you can do that here with an access permit, just another type of permit. But as I scroll farther down, I'm gonna assign this, this access permit to a person. And I wanted to highlight that the training that you can now add on the people or on the permit. So I'm gonna uh, go over to Mike Wilson's uh, record just to see what training he has on his um, certification and training assigned to him. So here I've got Mike Wilson um, as the technician that I wanna assign this permit to. I can go quickly look at his certificate that he's completed. So if he's got hot gas, hot work or compressor skid certification, I can check if he's got that to make sure um, I can assign this permit. But also training. Training um, was a big ask by a lot of clients to track some of the uh, courses and the sessions that they, they completed to get that certification. So you can add um, different training courses here, assign them to the people, and then assign that person to the permit or the work order. Very popular um, new feature that Russell's got in there. So you also see, as I've been linking between applications, it's created this breadcrumb type thing. I've got people here, I link from access permits, which I link from work order tracking, which I link from work order logs. So you can always go back to at any level to quickly get back to, to where I was at the start. Um, I'm gonna go back all the way to the operator log. And you'll see now I'm all the way back to the operator log where I, I can see all my work orders. <clears throat> the, the last thing, I'm gonna go back to the work order one more time. I wanted to highlight was the um, isolation management with the new lock management. So I'm going to go back to my related records. And you'll notice on the, if you're familiar with Maxima, the work order for HSE has some additional tabs. Um, the failure reporting has expanded uh, fields and attributes. Uh, the regulations, you can now track regular, regulatory compliance uh, activities. So I'm going to go to related record once again. So I'm going to click on the isolation. So this was a isolation management. Again, another new application with HSE. And what isolation management gives you is all the activities, the hazards, the isolations, the reviews, the sign offs that you need you know, to isolate an asset. But over on the isolations tab, they've expanded the lockout tagout. They've always had the lockout tagout operations below, but you now have a section in here called lock management. So if I go to lock management here, you can track the location of the locks and the keys outside, you know, before you actually go lock out that asset. Um, so depending on your process of, of Lotto, you might require this, um, the tracking of those locks and keys. It's another new feature in 7612. Okay, so now um, I'm gonna go back to this work order. So let's pretend, so we've, we planned this work with operations, um, that, but now we're gonna go complete the work. Maintenance, ma mainly a maintenance activity. Um, they're gonna come into their actuals like they normally do and assign all their labor and materials. But then they've got the ability to go to failure reporting. Um, I mentioned ISO 14224. So these are codes that are specific to the ISO industry um, where they're standard across the industry. So 
IBM provides that library of standard code so that you're using the same code every time to give you that failure trend reporting um, once you start populating. So there's different um, sections in here. There's a component level reporting. I think this new this is new for 7612 as well, where we've expanded out all the, the domain lists for some of these fields where now you can um, do a component and a maintainable item drill down um, in your reporting. You also have just the standard me mechanism and sub-mechanism um, codes that are important to tracking failures. You've got the safety related failures and detections, the barriers um, related to that failure. And then farther down, you've got the, the standard failure problem cause remedy, um, which is, is common to the core Maximo system. So all this information um, can now be entered right on that work order when you're completing it. Okay. So now that I've completed the work, the that's just the, the kind of the middle of the process as far as my, what I was showing the journey. The next step is I might want to do a further investigation of this compressor of what caused that failure or that shutdown. So again, from the work order, I could come over on my actions and I could create an investigation, a, a defect or an incident. Um, a lot of investigation as the full root cause investigation or the FMEA that they want to do on that on that failure. So I'm going to go over to related records again because I've already created that investigation. And again, this could be done by operations. This could be done by maintenance. And over on investigation, I'm going to go to the investigations application. And this gives you additional information around the investigation. So again, you can track all the um, event, uh, all the around the event of the root cause. So if you wanted to put an asset or a location, um, you've got a full risk assessment that you can complete on that investigation with another application. You've got regulations. Up at the top, different tabs that you can do to, to review all your actions. If you've got a sequence of events that you had to follow to do that root cause, um, the, you know, the, the what, why, how of, of what happened. And then um, as I scroll farther down through the tabs, you'll again see the related records. So this is important as this is the key link between the work order for the maintenance and the operation. So every uh, transaction has your work orders, has your logs. So if I'm op on operations, I can access this investigation from the log, or if I'm on the work order, I can access the investigation from there. Um, but then you also have the post. You have the, the solution details in the after action review, along with the full failure reporting that we saw on the work order. So you can do that deep dive into the root cause with tracking all the failure information associated with that um, investigation. Okay. So that um, after completing the investigation, that might lead into um, a management of change. So in this use case, I'm going to say that the compressor, um, you know, was not, there wasn't enough power in that compressor. So we needed to install a second compressor, maybe as for redundancy. So under related records, um, actually, I'm going to go back to the operator logs. And there's a management of change application, and that's divided into two pieces. Um, the management of change request, a lot of times um, a whole group organization will control the change that needs to be done. So you don't want everybody coming in and creating a management of change. So here I had operations create the MOC request, which has its own full workflow, just like a, a work request. And then maintenance or change management or safety can come in and convert that management request into a full blown man management of change. So here I've got a MOC related to that um, investigation of, you know, rebuilding the compressor skid configuration. Here you've got similar to investigation, but you've got all the change requirements. If there's training involved, 
um, the pre the pre start and post start of that operations around that change to that configuration. Once the management of change is completed, and I know I'm mo moving through this process fast just to cover a lot of areas, the management of change, you're gonna then maybe have a new configuration um, where you're gonna need to install that compressor. So my final work order might be a capital project. So I've got that already created here as well. And again, I attach it to the operation so they could get to it quickly as well. I'm gonna to go to the work order for the capital project of installing that compressor. And I wanted to highlight this because the, as part of that installation of that compressor might involve some new procedures around commissioning or startup um, that might've changed. So if I click on the plans tab for this capital project, I might have some operations activities that need to be completed. So down here on the uh, activities, I've got some operational readiness on permits like we just looked at. But you might also have um, tasks around commissioning and around startup. So if I expand this activity, which is really a task, I've got complete commissioning procedure. And if I scroll farther down on that task, you'll see that there's an operating procedure field that's been added as well. And again, just like the other HSE applications, you've got a whole application dedicated to operating procedures. So this is where you could take a, you know, a hard procedure that operations always has on the shelf um, and put that into Maximo to, to store that electronically. You've got a header here for the normal procedure, but you've also got procedure lines if you want to put the high level steps. Um, evolved with the procedure, and then you've also got the link document if you wanted to attach um, the whole procedure as a PDF. Um, you also notice I didn't point this out earlier. There's logs pretty much on any um, in any application within HSE. So if you want to keep that communication log either as just a work log or email communication between operations and maintenance, that's always tracked um, on each of the applications. So that's the operating procedure, the work order tracking here. I'm gonna go back to the work operator logs. Okay, so again, I started the process with an operator rounds. And, and I, that triggered my work order, which was attached on related records. I then converted that, sorry, I converted that uh, related, that first work order is where I found the issue that was at the plant, completed all the safety related work with my operations team. I then um, completed the work and followed it up with an investigation. The investigation then led into a management of change, which then led into the installation of this new compressor. Um, the other thing that I wanted to point out on the operator logs is when you were doing the operator rounds, uh, one, one thing that operators usually do is collect meter readings. So <clears throat> they do have the ability from the logs to collect readings right from this screen here. So I've got any any meters that are associated with the asset on this shift log will, will appear here or the location. So you can have the operator law operator enter their readings here as well. A lot of clients are starting to put the meters on the inspections. And in that case, um, if you're gonna wanna collect metered reading data on your work center inspection, um, which is the screen here, you're gonna wanna schedule that as a daily work order. Because um, it needs that asset attached to the inspection to collect those meters. So um, that's a very powerful tool when creating forms is if you've got any characteristic meters that have its own domain list or regular um, continuous meters, you can collect that data here in inspections and it'll feed right into the meter readings as long as there's an asset on that inspection form. Okay. Um, the other the other thing you can do always from the 
the operator log is you have the ability to create all those different transactions if it's a bypass, a work order, a communication. If you've got email communications that you want to track, you can create that email and send it right from your logs over to the um, maintenance department. And then the shift carryover. So you can do a, um, a, a shift log handover at the end of the day or end of the week. If you want to, um, I guess, the end of the day, the 12 hour shift, you can, if you've got any carryover log entries, um, you can note those here and approve them and sign them off. Um, and I know uh, Russell mentioned there's some additional features that they're trying to build into this uh, handover um, that are coming in the next release. But this is key to get your shift logs um, between the two, the night and the day um, handed over. I'm going to cancel that. Okay. And then the last um, thing I wanted to show is, and I'm, I'm going to flip over to another environment, is the operational actions. So if I go into Maximo operations again, this time I'm in oil and gas, and click on what's called operational actions. This gives you a quick list or dashboard of all the actions that operations team needs to be done, needs to complete. So if you see here on the right, I've got a quick filter of all the applications, all the actions um, associated with operations. But on the left, I've got queries that are already built out of the box for different applications. So if I've got some bypass uh, management activities associated with operations, they can quickly filter on those. Um, to, to go to complete those. If I've got certification, investigations, actions, management of change, all the different um, tabs that we saw on a management of teams have different actions. So you can create all these different actions associated with um, the different applications or the sub tabs that are assigned to the operation. So this gives them a kind of a one spot dashboard uh, for completing all that. Okay, so let me go back now to the journey. I know I moved pretty actually faster than I realized. So we went through, we went through operator logs. We went through inspection rounds where we looked at scheduled and unscheduled. We followed up with some maintenance work orders. We looked at some of the new functionality around access permits and training and lock management. Scheduled the work. We assigned some operator tasks, work, followed that up with an investigation, did a management of change for the configuration of the skid. We looked at how you can attach operating procedures and policies at that task level. Oh, I didn't look at production loss. I'll show you that here in a second. And then operation uh, dashboard for the tracking of the action. So the, the production loss, if I go back to my operator log, there is a, a tab on the rounds, and this is also accessible from the work order, where you've got a full benefits and losses application associated with HSE. So here I've got um, one I did on a compressor failure production loss, and this could be, you could do it on the benefit side. On, on this use case, I did it on the loss side, so you can say, potentially lose this much in our cost associated with the shutdown and then associate that loss to the, to the operator rounds or the work orders um, for that activity. Okay, so that kind of covered the journey. Um, there is one more slide I want to show you on some of the new features. Russell, I don't know if you, did I miss anything that you wanted to cover as far as um, some um, Matt, there was a question actually, you get the chance, could you show the um, uh, permit and certificate uh, type application and how we can associate training records with permit and certificate sure. type? I'm going to go back to um, a work order and access it from there. Go back to the work order. Yeah, I don't have the questions up yet. 
throw those questions at me. I think we've got about. Yeah, I think we've left. covered quite a lot of the questions between Lacey and myself, but um, there was. Um... Okay, great. Um, okay, related. I'm going to go over to related records so I can access my permits. And again, I could create a permit right from the left actions, or I, I can go view one I've already created. So down here in this related related permit to work and isolation section, I'm going to hit a new row and just try to find a new one. I'm going to go to the permit to work. Uh, what did they do it from permit to work or certification? Yeah, well, I, actually, the the question related to linking certification. So if you could just go to a, um, I don't know whether you've got a certification record with a permit and certificate type on it, or otherwise just go to a permit and certificate type. Uh, um i have one associated let me go to permit to work and see yeah i had one in here um so yeah so i think the question was linking training to this yes yeah, um, so if we can show how training the, 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 the it was the relationship between certification and training and we do that by on the permit and certificate type if you scroll down um oh, that's on permit to work sorry if you go to the uh there yeah go to the uh yeah. i'm gonna i've got here i've got a type uh a certification type associated with that, that permit and then if i scroll farther scroll down, down there is a um, the whole table, section, yeah. table okay. window, which is training. So you can have multiple different training records um, on the uh, <clears throat> I'm do on, 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 on the permit and certificate type, and then you can call up that permit and certificate type on the certification. So if we could quickly go to a certification record, if you have one, Matt. And yeah, I'm gonna have to create a new one. I just wanted to show that you can quickly add from here training. So if you wanted to have a training course or a certificate associated with this, you can mm. add it here. Is that what you were kind of thinking? Yes, it was. Yeah. So the, the thinking is that the uh, training is going to be more associated with the type of certificate than, than the certificate oh, itself. Uh, so what, what are you thinking, um, Russell, like the yeah, if you go to certificate, if you just go, yeah, so if you just, um, I just wanted to show the training capability to drive the training on permit and certificate type, if you could just go to a certification record, please, Matt, uh, any record, it, you know. It, yeah, I don't think I have many. If you don't have anyone with data. No. Yeah. Yeah, one that I created. But um, yeah, you've got the ability here on the certificate typed down at the bottom to attach the training. Yeah. Anyway, that's sort of the answer to the question is that's how, how you make that link. And then you have a permit and certificate type field on the certi certification and you uh, uh, and uh, you identify that, you, you, that will be the link into the, uh, the training required. Okay, great. <clears throat> now, um, were there any other questions? Because I did have that slide Russell of all the new changes in 7612 um, as well. We wanted to walk through that. Yeah, I think that would be a, a good one to show. Okay. Any other questions in the queue? Oh, yes, we've got plenty, but go ahead and show the okay. new features, I think, and then yeah. we'll jump back to, uh, to Q&A at the end. Okay. I'm gonna go to, um, I just stole this slide from Russell from our last meeting. I'm not going to highlight all these. I don't know, Russell, if you just wanted to, this was the list, and I think this is published somewhere now, um, of all the, the things that were in the 762 release. I think that was November. Um, yeah, this is, this is a couple of the big ones, Russell. This is all, um, this is all delivered uh, product now, so it's fully available. There's an overview presentation that we can make available to any anyone who wants it. So this is just a summary of the uh, capability delivered. So. Um, I, there was a question came up earlier about access permits and, and uh, limitations of access, so uh, and which I answered and confirmed that the limitation of access was one of the use cases for, for access permits. So we had a, a lot of requests from customers to have a simplified um, uh, 
permit process, for example, perhaps if you're doing an inspection, and it's a non-invasive inspection, but you just want to make sure that person has the permission to be where they should be on uh, on site and manage that access. So that's the access permit capability as requested by by many customers. Um, also, we, we had a question earlier about uh, the uh, incident management and robustness of the incident management application. So this has been under development. Uh, we've worked on incrementally enhanced incidents over, over many years now, so widely used by our customers. And, and our target has been to have this as a robust as application as anything, as a best of breed style of application. So uh, we would hope that it, it, it meets the uh, uh, meet, meets that meet, meets that criteria. Um, you'll see here with incidents. One of the things that feedback areas was being able to handle multiple events on an, on a single incident. Previously, we'd handled it with a global incident capability. You could link different incidents together. Uh, but what we saw that customers would add uh, extra tabs to incidents to cover different, say, a trans a vehicle incident or. A, uh, for, for, for example, and uh, or, or, or say say damage damage related uh, uh, to, to an incident. So so now we have a construct which gives you incident events. So you can specify if uh, the, the the on the main instant if you had a say you had a, a road tanker accident and and there was damage to the tanker and the uh, person was injured. So you have a vehicle you have an injury to report. You also have some vehicle vehicle damage to report. Maybe there's a spill and there's some environmental impact. They can all be incident events. Um, so now with the uh, with with the new capability, also these multiple injuries and illnesses um, uh, associated with an incident as well, uh, which was much requested by customers, and multiple outcomes for a, a specific injury or illness. So. Uh, and, and that's all been up to the, the OSHA reporting capability we, we provide has been updated to a, a, accommodate that as well. So, uh, yeah, that, that, that was a the, the sort of the um, a gap we closed in, in, in the latest release um, that uh, is worth highlighting. Um, we also in, enhanced our investigations capability. Um, there's a five whys capability to do root cause analysis, and uh, we had requests from a number of customers to be able to do uh, a sort of structured um, cause analysis technique. And um, so that's a capability we've added and we've made it configurable so you can sort of build your own scat charts uh, in, within within investigations uh, to complement the uh, five wise capability we already provide. Um, one of the other ones perhaps to call out is that uh, I know Matt, you'd mentioned is the lock management capability there. So that's a, um, a, a new application in, in, in 762. Um, oft requested was the capability to associate training with uh, uh, MOC. And it's sort of interesting now we've had the uh, question about associating training directly with a certification. Um, so we'll look at that. Uh, but we did certification through the permit and certificate type. But on MOC, uh, the specific uh, ask was to have training required for an MOC listed on the MOC to there's a BOSHA related requirements around that. So that's something we introduced. That was uh, uh, probably the most uh, uh, requested uh, uh, MOC enhancement from our from our user groups. Um, multiple general enhancements around permit to work and isolation, as you can see here, sort of covering some gaps in the process, providing options, simplifying the process. So quite a bit of detail around permit to work. And then um, another one that was a uh, customer requested uh, was the revision of, of regulations, just having that little bit more control over the, uh, the the revision level of a of a, of a regulation, um, so that's probably another one to highlight. And then the um, they're also on the list. You'll see the training management. So there are actually two applications: training courses and training modules. So you can optionally build training modules into a training course, and you can manage the uh, from the training course application. You can manage all the sessions of that train of an individual training course. So you can associate training requirements with other Maximo applications, and um, the, the um, as, as well as ma ma managing the training itself. And so, um, and also as Matt showed, linking that training to an individual. So uh, we are actually just in the process of doing a, 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 an application overview of all the training uh, capability because there is quite a bit to it. So um, we've been making that available so, so shortly. So if anyone has an interest in that, let us know and we'll, we'll get that to you as soon as possible.
So I think Matt, that probably just covers a, a quick overview there, it leaves us a little bit of time for any remaining questions. Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, and as you can see, there's there's so much to HSE. We could do multiple sessions. Um, you know, we just covered with just a small piece with operations today. But you see all these other capabilities. Um, training sessions on. So, any questions in the queue um, that we want to highlight? There are plenty of questions in the queue. Okay. Yes, I'm afraid to look. <laughs> <laughs> And, and what we'll do, because there, there probably are too many for us to get through here in the next 10 minutes. So um, what we did after one of the scheduler webinars is we just consolidated everything into a Q&A document and we posted it along with the link to the recording and the presentation material. So don't sweat it. If we don't get your question answered here in the next 10 minutes, we'll make sure that we document it and, and put it in the Q&A um, in a Q&A document and get that posted for you. Um, we had a number of questions around um, kind of which of these new applications within HS and the E are enabled on mobile. Um, and a lot of them were when you were talking about like lockout, tag out capabilities, Matt. Um, yeah, I don't, Russell, I don't know if you want to, I know you, you mentioned a few new features in the new mobile. Um, I know incident reporting has always been a full app part of anywhere. Um, where you could do the um, report incidents right on the mobile. Yeah, both oil and gas and HSE include the incident reporter application. Um, we do get requests for mobile capability uh, around permits work uh, comes up uh, quite often. Um, we know that a number of uh, our Maximo business partners have um, uh, have done work in this area. Um, so uh, we. The, the latest release doesn't include any additional uh, capability. It's something we look at as we go forward with our plans for Maximo Mobile. You'll see that new capability coming along. So we'll look to see how we can leverage some of that new capability for HSE applications in future. Um, and probably the, the, the priority area would be around um, permit request, permit checklists. That's probably the most demanded, demanded area that we have, but we'll, um, you know, we'll talk extensively with customers before we, uh, we we move forward with that. So at the moment, the, the the development work is really all in the all in the future. Yeah, and a lot I've seen a lot of clients starting to use actions on the mobile, you know, to link to that work order as even maybe even a safety inspection, a permit. Yes. Um, yeah. you, you have so much flexibility to create those forms. Um, from yes. Yeah, it's a good point, Matt. And one of the things you'll see that we've done is on the uh, access access permits, we've linked in the access permit to uh, inspection records and there to be able to leverage the uh, uh, more of the inspections. So, um, so there are a couple of places where we've linked in uh, um, uh, the inspections capability to to access permits, and that's something we'll definitely do more of to take a, advantage of the capability of inspections and integrate it with other. Uh, with other HSE applications. One of the requests we had recently was to to do a um, use that new capability to do a pre-start safety review on MOC, which was a which was a good enhancement that we'll uh, be looking at closely. Yeah, great. Yeah, because I think I, what I've seen with a lot of clients is the work centers has been popular because you can set different roles like an operations or even a contractor where they don't have to go into the main maximal core system. They just log straight in on their iPad to the work center. Right. And their inspection sitting there for that activity that they need. Yeah. Um, that's been very popular to be person. To be user yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been a strong use case. And as we see the, in the new mobile Maximo with the, as we um, introduce the uh, disconnected capability, then that really starts yep. to uh, provide further benefit. Great. Um, one other question we had come in here is, can you touch upon the difference between an operating procedure and a job plan? Sure. Well, so, I want Russell, if you want to take that one. Yeah, I'll take that one, Matt, if you, uh, if you like. So, yeah, so operating procedures were sort of, um, I mean, one of the things you'll see is that uh, on a job plan, on job plan tasks, you can associate operating procedures with, with job plan tasks. So, um, so uh, operators, so operating procedures were um, we 
we didn't want to completely tie in the operating procedure at uh, the um, um, I mean, and you could liken a procedure to a job plan task as well. So you could model operating procedures with job plan tasks. But the idea was to be able to have a separate uh, uh, application so that if you wanted to treat uh, operating procedures separately from a work order, you could do, you know, and link them to other applications, other places in, in, in Maximo. Uh, but also that you could, if necessary, supplement a task with more detail about an operating procedure, without and um, uh, without uh, without going into the uh, having to generate um, work order task as opposed to an operating procedure. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, Russell. Like yeah. the, the job plan is really your work order that, mm. that that includes all the activities that need to be you know have labor tracked, have materials tracked, and then the procedure is attached at that task level. So it gives you that more detailed steps of you know what to go do for that activity, but you might not want necessarily want to track you know all the hours on every one of the procedural. Right. On that yeah. Hour. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a, a good way of explaining it. Thanks, Matt. Great. Here's another one for you guys. Um, does the logs application have the ability to record when it was most recently updated? And is it searchable? Um, well, that's the date timestamp of when you entered the log. Is that the question? I'm going to go over to that. Yeah, it, it will actually, the, the, you, you've got two options. It will automatically record the date timestamp, the point at which a log entry was made, uh, but it will also allow you to reference the, uh, if you are referring to a, a um, it, there's a separate field which allows you to, uh, Enter, let's say, the actual time. If you were recording that something happened at a certain time, you can enter that separately to the time at which the log is recorded. Yeah, so you got the log date, which is pretty much the timestamp, and then the event date. The event date, yeah. Um, is where you could, if this is something that maybe further in yeah. the future or in the past, um, that yeah. you need to enter that date. Yeah. Uh, and it is all searchable in the way it, it uses all the capability that search capability that's available in uh, in any Maximo application. Yep. Okay, great. Um, another question here: Do I need to implement all of the operational capabilities that you've shown us um, shown us today together? No, I mean, that's one of the things that I've heard from clients. Like with HSC, you're going to get every application, um, which is, you saw, there's, you know, over 30 different applications, I think. Um, but with the security settings, that's where you're going to want to, you know, start slow, baby steps. Like start with operator logs, as maybe procedures for your operator staff. Just give them access to the, the log screen. Uh, maybe not even getting into the, some of these other tabs, you can hide those. So you definitely want to start slow, show them, uh, use a couple of the applications and then grow into HSE. Um, you know, start to attach operator rounds to work orders, then go into the safety. Um, I don't know, Russell, if you have any other opinions. I no, I, I agree, uh, Matt. That's what I've typically seen at customers because I think with these applications, there's always some process change and some um, sort of cultural change with changing applications, safety related applications that you know, has to be caref carefully, carefully managed as well. So I think this this progressive introduction is is, is a good way to do it. So I've seen you know, that's typically the way that that we see customers implement in the field. Great. And the system was designed to be incremental as well, so there's no constraints on you doing that. Yeah, it's a little overwhelming, I think, at first when you see all the applications. But when if you, like I said, start um, in individual groups, operation safety, um, you can definitely consolidate it to be a lot easier to implement. If you start slow. Um, one one thing, I don't know if we, right. we only got a couple minutes left. I do want to highlight. Um, I'm starting to build out a lot of videos. Um, I know Darren who used to with be with IBM built a lot of videos, but I've got a a website I'm going to start uh, advertising on LinkedIn that's got some links over to different videos around Maximo. Um, as you know, I'm, I'm a big football fan, so I kind of combine football and uh, Maximo into my website. But I've got um, some links here to videos that are on pretty much anything's out on YouTube or um, Google. 
that I've, I've kind of organized into different playlists. So um, I'll, I'll kind of send this out to everybody through LinkedIn and you guys can start to use this as a central spot to, to, to see different videos around Maximo. And then I, I think Valerie, like you've got some Thank other you. links you'll be sending out as well. Right, absolutely. And again, I apologize, we didn't have a chance to get through everybody's um, questions that, that you've posted. I'll leave this running for maybe just another minute, so feel free to continue to submit those questions. We'll consolidate those into a document and post those on the, uh, the IoT community. So um, again, just a special thanks to our panelists as well as all who attended today. And this will conclude today's webcast on Maximo HSE. And I appreciate your time and everyone who attended. Thank you very much. Thank you.